So today is electrical day. We've got ma the majority of what we need. Oh my god, this battery's heavy. And this is our battery. It's a line eye battery. It's like fully, oh my god, it's heavy. <laughs> it's fully encased, so it's like waterproof, low temperature. It's got like heat pads and stuff, so it should be good back here. Um, we were originally going to put it on that side, but now I think we're going to put it on this side. We don't really know what we're doing. We've done a lot of research and we think we have a good idea, and a good grasp of the knowledge, but we're really just trying to figure it out as we go. today. Do we know what we're doing? Hell no. <laughs> but we have an idea. I bought cable that was, I think, too big, but I did that on purpose because I don't want anything to start melting or catch on fire. Because it was like, well, you're probably okay with eight gauge. And then I was like, I'm going to get four and two. And then for the battery, to this thing I got a two aught or two a double zero however you want to say it so yeah we have a bunch of stuff to mount like this switch this switch is a pain in the freaking butt well show them what it's it is huge so this there's gonna be a, a cable that comes off the positive terminal straight to this and then that goes to the positive terminal on this box this is not what I thought the size was going to be. <laughs> it's so that we can just have like a shut off to the power if we need to do anything. Yeah, like but if I want to huge. change fuses or whatever, I can just turn it off without killing myself. Um, we're just following a diagram on YouTube for the most part. And uh, yeah, we were going to put it back there. I cut this off and everything for it, but it's just not going to work. We have to put it up there. And then I'm going to put the DC to DC charger here. So at least there's somewhere to put the DC to DC charger now, because before I was like, <laughs> We have such limited space. Like, this is our battery and our inverters up there, and that's, like, all that fits in this whole spot. Yeah, and then this is going to have to, like, go here. And, oh, man, wait, this is a big pain. This is going to, like, have to go like this. And then... It was just very limited space in here. So. Oh, I will show you. You've probably already seen this, but I will show you our diesel heater setup. we got our fuel tank and our diesel heater. And the duct runs over there. This oh, the... you got it? No. No. <laughs> this is the duct. <laughs> this is why you do this before you put it underneath the counter, and then you can't get it up out of the counter again. Oh. This is called sheer stupidity. <laughs> power cord so this power cord is going to go from here to the the shunt in order to power the battery monitor yeah this is the one that we have i don't really we... know i don't really know if you're supposed to put a fuse in between but i am just for good luck
see my little crescent wrench. Wait, I wonder if this will work. Oh, it's just a bit too big. Is this the same size? What does it say? Fifteen. Okay. Okay. I literally just used it. I can just use the vice grip. Look at the vice grip. It's just my hand. There. This is like a rat's nest, eh? Trying to it is, yeah. <laughs> figure this crap out. Dude, some of these came factory, like, impossible to take off. Like, they were so on there, it was like, yeah, okay. I don't think we needed to do it that tight. So we connected this on off switch to this the panels box. and we also connected it to the battery and then this wire just goes to the battery monitor. It's supposed to be on here but I'm just, so I just put this on here to see if this switch actually turns it off and on. So right now it's off so there's no power to it which is exactly what, exactly how it's supposed to be. So we're going to turn it on and make sure that this um, turns on. Yep. And it's on! We got power! <laughs> yeah, wow, look at that. Turn oh. it off. Turn it on. Perfect. Okay, that's exactly what's yeah. supposed to happen. I don't think so. Should I put it like this instead this time? Yeah, yeah, sure. It's all bent. Thanks to my test over there. I just plugged in the uh, wall charging thing to the panel, and it is charging at 10 amps. Perfect. 140 watts an hour. 10 amps an hour, so it charges in 11 hours. <laughs> <laughs> but it's better than nothing, so if we have shore power, we get 10 amps an hour, and uh, something you can do in the winter time in the north is plug into um block heater yeah, points. Yeah, a, a bunch of stores and businesses, Oops. just places everywhere will have charging, just like wall plug-ins yeah. to plug in your vehicle. So we can just plug in our battery and charge it up while we wait. Or yeah, even exactly. while we grocery shop or whatever we're doing. Yeah, and that's charging off of... Oh, sorry, it's so dark off of uh, this thing here. Yeah, that's Noco Genius. Which is then plugged into a little outlet, or uh, an extension cord that's in the wall. But yeah, that's nifty. 
So when this thing is fully charged, we can set this battery monitor to 110 amps, which is 100% charge, and then it'll actually tell us how much charge we have. Oh my gosh, this is a wiring disaster. This is the cable for the... Ooh. Cram! Cram in the foot! This one's in here! Which way? I don't know. This way, I think. Holy shit! Woohoo! There we have it! Our diesel heater is now connected. Ignore this mess. We're gonna clean all this up, make it look pretty, but... It's connected now. Yeah, look Sweet. at that, eh? Crazy. So, uh, we just need some diesel, and then we can prime it. And we have see if power. it works. It should work. <laughs> yeah, woohoo! No more um, cold days and nights. Yeah, you can we're see. outside my dad's house. With this tiny little heater. With this right now. <laughs> that actually is like a beast. Yeah, it's hot it's, as hell. It's here. hot, yeah. <laughs> and that thing is three and a half times more powerful than this. Yeah. It's like minus, I don't know, four maybe. It's pretty cold. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not it's that not bad cold, right cold, now. It's cold, but it's getting cold. The nights are getting pretty cold. Yeah, so right now... Look at that. Yeah. That's not that loud. It might get worse. People, yeah, maybe it'll get worse. Yeah, you can see it moving through the fuel line. All the air. Is it starting? I, can you turn off the other one? I can't hear. Seven, eight amps, hundred yeah, watts an hour. There. <laughs> Is it going heat? Yeah. It's a little unnerving, but it seems like it's working. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's fine now. There's no I more smoke. The shit out of the That's how loud it's gonna be. I don't know. <laughs> I set it to 25. 26 even. <laughs> trying to boil us? This thing is fun because it tells you how long the battery has left. So we, we've been running it for... Actually, that's a good question. I think it tells me... Oops. No. Is that the time there? 4.11? Mm. Is that 4 hours and 11 minutes? No, it's 4.11. I set the time. Maybe it oh. doesn't tell you how long it's been running. Hmm. Yeah, darn. Wait. No. Darn. It tells you what temperature it is in here, except I don't know what it's reading off of. Like, I don't know where the sensor is. Wait, but this one tells us. We've got 105 out of 110 amp hours left. It's been running for at least probably two hours. At least, yeah. It's only pulling 30 amps. Or, sorry, three. Three <laughs> amps an hour. Nothing. And it's, I'm pretty sure it's on high, like the heat coming out of this thing, it's I can't warm. put my hand, like I can only put it to like this far back without burning myself. It's like, very warm, it's nice. Oh, it's, oh that's so nice. Oh it's hot in here, it's, it's yeah, it's like a sauna. <laughs> we put the cushions back in, so we had them out for a while. Now it's set up like a couch. Oh it's toasty boy. in here. I'm excited to do some living in here, I guess, now yeah. in the winter. It'll be so pretty watching like the snowfall being nice and warm in here. It's gonna look, I was saying today, because we had the heat, space heater going before we had that thing running. The ha the first, like, the half, the front half, that's... Like the cab of the truck. Yeah, the cab of the truck 
was completely frosted, but this thing, all the windows and the top and everything was completely melted off, and just looking at it from upstairs, it was like, <laughs> what the? It looked bizarre to someone. We have this fancy little remote that came with our diesel heater. On, off, up and down. Let's see if it works. Celsius. Oh, that's fancy. I wonder how far I can do this from. I don't know. That's pretty neat. Yeah, because like if we're in there driving or something, I can turn it on. Well, like we can stop, wait in there for like a couple minutes for, for this to, to kick yeah. on. Because obviously you're not supposed to drive with this thing running. That could be a freaking disaster. This is pretty cool. I'm pretty excited to be moved in here, especially I'm really excited about the windows because then we can look at the beautiful scenery. Yeah, winter. Yeah, it'd be nice. Yeah, because usually you're just like crammed in a little hidey hole for winter. <laughs> well, especially with our hot tent, there's no windows, so we're in beautiful places yeah. and we're warm, but we, we can't to go see outside it. Yeah. To see everything. Freeze your balls off. <laughs> <laughs> So I just put up this carbon monoxide detector. I put it a little sideways. I gotta fix that. That's really bothering me. <laughs> um, but it's battery operated. And it's a smoke and carbon monoxide detector. I'm gonna get another carbon monoxide detector and put it somewhere else. Just for double reassurance. But yeah, it's battery operated. And it, it tells you, uh, like, it'll start beeping. And it'll say either fire or carbon monoxide, so you'll know what's going on. Which I thought was pretty cool. I'm running the heater now for almost four hours. And I think I've only used, I think it was at 94. We're still using about half an amp an hour. It's not very much power at all. And I think it's like, I don't exactly know what temperature it is in here. But it is pretty warm. Like, I think it's at least 22, 23. Because this thing, this thing actually has a temp monitor. It says it's 35 degrees Celsius. There's no way. Oh, maybe that's because I have it down here and it's way hotter over here. That's probably why. <laughs> if I had this up here, it would probably be a lot less. But yeah, I also cut a piece of wood that I'm going to paint blue and screw right there so that it has like double protection from any water coming in. And uh, then I might silicone around the edges because my cut job was not very straight. Like, look at that. That is awful. Well, I'm just gonna close it for now, but then that'll go here, and then I just need a tiny, tiny. I really don't need a lot. This one too. Yeah. Don't put that on. For okay, it's super tight in there. Okay. And that'll go. Pulling the wires underneath the truck in the box. I can see the, the plug, it's right there. We just need to get it through that hole. It's working. <laughs> Charging? Yeah, 40 amps an hour, and that's at idle too. I want to just make sure the lights and everything works. Okay, so everything's on, and we're still good. Everything's operational. Yeah, I turn up the radio, I turn up the heat to full blast, and I turned on the like 13,000 lumen light bar. Everything's working. All the all the electronics look okay. So you're gonna turn off the truck and see. 
If it, if it stops charging? Yes. Okay. So right now the truck is on, so we are getting 39.1 amps. But if we turn the truck off, we should be getting zero, hopefully, as long as we did everything correctly. Yes. Did it turn off? What? It turned off, yep. I just bought a weather station that has an outdoor temperature sensor, so I've got in and out. It says it works down to minus 40 if I use lithium batteries, so hopefully that's true because those lithium batteries weren't exactly cheap. But this thing's got a barometer, I think. Let's see. It's got indoor outdoor temp, barometric pressure forecast, and the remote sensor. It also has uh, like the day, the time, and an alarm clock, so that's pretty cool. I'm gonna mount it on the wall. I was hoping there was two holes, but there's only one. So I'm really wondering how I'm gonna get it to to stay. I'm not sure. I'll think of something. So yesterday we set up the DC to DC charger, and here's the positive wire, the negative wire, and this fuse block with the 40 amp fuse, so we don't fry anything. And then the power wire that powers the DC to DC charger, because it needs a signal, a 12 volt signal, to turn on only when the vehicle is running. And that is right, oh, sorry, there. It's, it's, this wire is stripped, runs into the back with the other wires and connects into the DC to DC charger. And this is just underneath the fuse, because this only has power when the vehicle is in run. And there's my temperature sensor. I'm just gonna put that in here for now, because it shouldn't go anywhere. You can see a, a wire up there in split loom. That's the wire. Then that wire runs across the beam of the truck onto the other side of the truck. And it, as you can see, it's right there in the middle of the frame and I drilled a hole into the box of the truck, so yeah, that was kind of interesting doing that. Oh, you good girl. Oh my goodness, that's an attack. Ah! Hey, you wanna see if our temperature sensor works? You know, it's just a white blur. She's so overexposed. She's hard to expose for, because if I expose for her, everything else is dark. Yeah, yeah, you're hard to expose. Yeah. Anyways, we've still been driving back and forth to work. It's uh, like 65k one way. And on that 65k, we went from 60% battery, or 63 or 64% to 100%. So that DC to DC charger, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And especially because uh, in the winter you have to start your vehicle and idle your vehicle to warm it up. And now we're not just wasting gas, we're also creating power and harnessing that power. <laughs> Which is uh, nice to know we're not just wasting gas. So as you can see there's a few more changes in here too. We also actually hooked up the inverter now the cables are going here because we got the 150 amp fuse and we put a blue well i mean a piece of wood that i painted blue to keep any water from coming up and spraying this well everything but this most importantly and the wires I did an absolutely terrible cut job though, as you can see, so I'm gonna have to like silicone that or fill wood filler. <laughs> I'm not really sure, but I'll think of something. Inverter does actually work. I'll show you later, but uh, you just turn it on, it beeps, and we have power. It takes about, it takes about 10, nine and a half, 10 amps an hour to charge the laptop. And I think the phone is like one and a half, but I'll, I'll look in a, a little bit here and show you how it is actually working now. Crazy. <laughs> so 
So uh, even on low power, I turned the diesel heater off because it is disgusting in here. It is currently 33 degrees Celsius in here. <laughs> and I believe it, man. It is, it's bad. And then I put the remote sensor inside the truck. So inside the truck is seven, but outside I'm pretty sure it's around two, three. I need to find somewhere to put it outside because the cab is always a little warmer. But yeah, can you, can you believe this is this is low power mode on the diesel heater? Like there is no lower than this. So um, we're gonna need some colder weather in order to stay uh, not boiling to death. That is for sure. I'll show you the inverter now. I've got the foam plugged into the inverter. So I think that's going to be the end of this video. Thanks for watching if you if you actually watched it. It's a pretty long video. But I think I'm going to end off the video with another small, it wasn't really a hike, more of a walk, but it was pretty. So stick around for that. I'm on a trail that I've never been on before, which is kind of absurd because I've been to this town thousands of times. It's called, um, well actually I don't know what the trail's called, it's just called Call Lake Provincial Park and it goes throughout the park. So far the, so far the autumn colors are beautiful. You're supposed to get a view of the lake and the mountains up on the ridge trail, it's a loop. Three kilometer loop and a five kilometer loop. I veered off the trail a bit into the marshy bit. I feel like this would be lake if it was higher water levels. Because this is pretty mucky. But the lake is right there. Had to veer off the trail to find the lake. But this looks like a place you'd see a giant moose. <laughs>